Hi everyone and welcome to this session. Today we're going to be having a look at some of the fundamentals of tracking. We're first going to be starting off with stabilization but I'm also going to be looking at the various different areas where the tracking tools will actually appear and how they could be used. The first thing we're going to start off with is looking at the stabilizer tool on the desktop. This can be found on the tools in the middle of the interface and you can see it says stabilization. If you do not see this, normally you just need to switch to the effects menu and this will then make the tools appear. To get into the stabilizer from the smoke desktop, you simply select the stabilizer so you get the red cursor and you always tap on the top left hand corner of the frame that you'd like to stabilize. The white cursor indicates a result and then you click into the actual stabilizing tool itself. Now the stabilizer works in two modes. You've got what we call the front view. This is indicated by the little tab here that says front or F1 and the result view which is over here switching to result or F4. Depending which view you're in you will then get the tracking tools. So this is one little thing for people who are just starting off with smoke. If you don't see the tracking markers most likely you're in the result view. So in other words you're viewing the result of the stabilization. Since nothing has happened yet, we're not going to see anything anyway, so make sure you go back to the front view or press F1. The fundamentals of tracking, in this case for 2D tracking, is based on a principle using two boxes on the screen. So if I zoom into the frame here, you can see that we've actually got two little tracking boxes. The solid one tells me the pattern that I'm defining, that is the pattern that I'll be tracking. The dotted box is the scanning region, so every single time a frame advances forward, Smoke will be scanning within the dotted area to find a matching pattern. We localize this obviously because if there's lots of the same patterns all over the frame and we only want to focus on a specific region, it makes sense to actually just isolate the area which we want to track. Hence the two boxes for this particular type of track. The other thing that we need to know about is how we can move this tracker around and set it up. So you can simply go ahead into the center of the tracking boxes and actually pick it up and position it anywhere you would like on the screen. Alternatively, if you are zoomed out of the frame like I'm in here and you don't want to have to zoom in all the time to pick up the tracking box, a very easy tip is to hold down control. And by holding down control, you can see my cursor is nowhere near the tracking box at all. But if I just click on the screen and drag, you can see how it automatically picks up the tracking box and I can place it where I'd like on the screen. So it's really, really handy if you're working with very large frames or very, very tight frames. You don't always have to zoom in quite tight just to position the tracking box. Now what I'm going to do is just zoom in using my little navigational tools and we're going to pick up the tracking box. I'm just going to place it on the numbers over here. That's what we're going to track. Now to get a sense of what you're about to see, if I want to zoom this frame to fit the full screen, I hold control and I click home. So that's the full frame fitting the actual gray area of the desktop. If I now hit play, you can see that it's an unstable frame. So you can see we've got quite a bit of bounciness going on. So maybe the cameraman wasn't holding it properly or maybe the tripod wasn't steady, doesn't matter, but we want to take something that's bouncing around and stabilize it. The first point is when we're stabilizing it, the most basic type of stabilization or tracking is always to go to the first frame and then pick up your tracking box and position it down in that point. That puts a reference point on frame one. This means the pattern that I've got matching in this box will be the one that is looked for throughout the scan. To illustrate this, we've now positioned the box at frame one, we want to go ahead and analyze this. We're going to analyze forward. Once again, default behavior, and I press analyze. You can see straight away that the tracker has gotten to work, and it's now analyzing those frames over time. It creates a motion path on the screen, and if I was to zoom into this and we just have a closer look, you can see how the path has been created. And if I scroll back, you can see the track has been pretty successful at getting a pretty stable track from that. Now, we want to go ahead and actually see the result of what's been created with the tracker. In order to do this, we need to go from looking at the front view, which shows us the tracking tools, to looking at the result view. So if I switch this over or press F4, it gives us the result view. The tracking boxes go away, but if I start scrubbing through, you can see how the frame is now shifting about and it's actually stabilized. So if I was to put my pen on that point over there and let's say, for example, we hit the play key on the keyboard, you can see how those will always stay in exactly the correct place. So the plate has effectively been stabilized. Now this type of stabilization is called a shift. So effectively you've got your frame and the pixels are being moved around within the frame. We can change this mode by switching it from shift to letterbox, which is a different type of shifting method. So it actually moves the frame up and down. 
you've also got another mode over here called fill and this will actually fill all the pixels into the frame it does stretch the picture slightly so you might get a bit of distortion but you may or may not want to use this in certain cases another option you've got here is something called roll and what roll does is when we play this you can see that whatever edges got cropped off at the bottom of the screen so in order for the stabilization to work it actually had to shift the frame down when we play this back you can see the bottoms now at the top and the tops now at the bottom this could actually be used if you wanted to stabilize a plate put something on it and then reintroduce the camera movement or stabilize or unstabilize the plate this is how you can actually preserve pixel data so this is another useful tool which we'll look at again in another blog but the main one that most of us use is something called crop edges and crop edges simply does what it says it crops the edges of the black once the plate's been stabilized so if I play this back you can see we've got a nice stabilized plate so it's slightly enlarged but we don't have any of the bouncy movement anymore so if I was to take the plate that I've got here and I hit process this will then process a final result for me and this is effectively how you would go about processing and stabilizing a plate now inside the stabilizer you can see you can have as many stabilizers as you like now this is purely from the fact of being able to analyze the frame but the stabilizer module effectively only does a one point stabilization it doesn't do multiple points but it's very quick and easy if you just need to stabilize something so here's our stabilized plate if I go ahead and play this back for you you can see that it's now nice and stable just to see if we wanted to have a look at the before and after I've got one here already made you can see here's the original this is the stabilized version if I play it back you can certainly see the difference between the two plates so this is just giving you an idea of how the basic stabilization works now this was stabilization in the actual desktop itself but what happens when you're working in the timeline well let's have a look at another example and here I've got a clip which I'll just bring down here to the bottom and I'll open it up as a timeline so you can imagine that this shot has been edited in with other shots in the timeline and it requires some type of stabilization so to access stabilization from within a clip inside the timeline you select the clip that you would like to stabilize and you apply the axis soft effect so my 3d compositor in the timeline if I click on it it applies itself to the clip we then click on the E button to go into the advanced editor inside here if you focus your eyes right to the middle of the screen you will see that there is the stabilizer option as well so you can see the button says stabilizer and before you go into it you need to decide exactly what you're going to be doing with the stabilizer so in this case we can either track or stabilize we want to stabilize now looking at this shot if I play it back what I really want to do is just remove out some of the bouncy movement in the scene I want it to be a little bit more smoother so we don't need to really stabilize rotation or scale all we actually want to do is really stabilize position so before I go into the tracking tool you'll notice it says stabilize rotation setting is off scaling is off this is kind of pre-setting everything up before you actually go into the tracking tool so now once we've got those settings done you click stabilizer we then come into the stabilizer and you'll notice it's exactly the same as what you saw earlier on the desktop in this case we're gonna go ahead we'll pick up our tracking box remember that tip hold down control and anywhere on the UI you can pick up the tracking box and just position it where you like so I'm just gonna position it at the top of the pole like so now let's go ahead and once again I'm on frame one and hit analyze and see what happens the trackers goes ahead and start doing the track which is really good but that at some point it will eventually fall off okay now I knew this was gonna happen obviously to illustrate the lesson here but the reason why it happened is if you remember when we set the reference point in frame one the shading the lighting around the actual bar itself was a specific color now this is maybe one of the ways in which tracking works it could be defined on color pattern or whatever but ultimately at some point you can see how the tracker just loses its way now there are two methods in which we can actually get around this problem now I'm gonna show you two methods they're really easy and they can help you get out of a real pickle when actually dealing with some difficult types of tracking like this for example so one of the things you can do is something known as frame snapping and what snapping will do is instead of always referring back to the original pattern on frame one so remember when I placed the tracker it defined the pattern we were going to be tracking with over the whole duration so from frame one which is the pattern we have here it keeps on referring back as it's scanning and that's how we actually make a match and most generic tracking works that way but if I know that let's say at frame 133 that was the last good frame with a tracker held on to and then everything else goes completely wrong it makes sense for me to say to the application let's take frame 133 and use that as my new reference point 
So if I go over here in the interface, you'll see there's a button here called Snap. If I click on it once, you can see how the tracking box has simply snapped back. So if I just jog backwards and forwards, you can see how it snaps. So, but in the middle of a track, it's actually going to be resetting the reference points. It's going to define a new pattern to track. So if I just go anywhere and just pick up from where we left off, so I've had Analyze, you can see that it then analyzes and it simply snapped at that point at frame 133 and then it allows us to perfectly perform the track very well. This can be used quite often as I said before with patterns changing with things moving around the scene snapping is actually a really really good tool to use. That's method one using snap to actually redefine the pattern that you're going to be tracking in the middle of a track. The second way in which you can do this is if I just reset the tracker once and uh, this time what we'll do is once again on frame one I'll just zoom in here I'll pick up the tracker box and also position it on top of the bar. This time what I'm going to be doing is instead of using a mode known as fixed, I'm going to turn the mode off and I refer to this as roaming. Now what happens is when fixed is on, the system always refers back to the pattern that we're tracking from. So if you define it frame one, doesn't matter where you are in tracking, it'll always refer back to frame one unless you use snapping. However, when fixed is turned off, what Smoke will do is, as it's tracking the frames, instead of always referring back to frame 1 where I've defined the pattern, it will always look at the previous frame to find a match. If it does, then it actually tracks. So let's go ahead with Fixed Off and do the analysis and you'll see what happens. It's now doing exactly the same track, and look what happens when it gets to the end. It then actually makes the track quite successfully. So this mode will always refer back to the previous frame that it's tracking against. It doesn't always go back to the beginning. This is very useful when you've got things like objects turning around or angles of shapes changing over time. So you don't have to sit there and snap through every single frame. You just turn it to fixed off and this can happen. The one thing you just need to be aware of is when you are using the option with fixed off, sometimes, not always, but sometimes the tracker might slip slightly. So you just got to be aware of that and be ready to compensate for that. Now let's have a look at the result that we've got. So we've tracked within the tracker inside of Axis. If I press return, it takes me back out to the actual Axis 3D compositor inside of the timeline. You can see how it's now shifted my frame in order to do this. Now we don't have the options to do the crop, the roll and all that. What it's done is it's actually shifted the whole frame. So we need to do what we call an offset inside the compositor to counteract the stabilization that we've done. So the tracking data has been put into the layer option. So this is the layer animation that's been created. If I click offset, it now allows me to offset the frame without disturbing the stabilization data that I've made. So kind of think of it as the top level of animation and then the middle level of animation. In here, what we'll do is we'll simply go ahead and scale up the frame slightly and I'll just reposition it. And as you can see, as long as the frame doesn't fall over the white border, which is what you can see over there, we can go ahead and actually, you know, have it nicely stabilized within the frame. That's not looking too bad at all. If I exit this, you can see it's still inside the timeline, and we can go ahead and actually process that result to get a final version from that. Let's go ahead and play this back. You can see how I've now stabilized that plate as well. So once again, this is just to give you an idea of where the tracking tools and stabilization tools will fall. If we were to do a before and after, once again, you can see exactly what happened. I've simply stabilized the plate. I've kept that nice circular motion that's going around the person. I've just removed that real bumpiness that's going on there inside the scene. So stabilization in the timeline is just as powerful as stabilization available on the desktop.